Today we're in Tainan, Taiwan, and we're doing an interview for Inside Martial Arts. I've been doing martial arts for about 31 years, 30 years, something like that. I'm 41. I used to watch Kung Fu when I was a little kid, and I wanted to go to Asia and train. And I was working in finance in New York City. And when September 11th was over, I just said, you know, I'm not going back to finance. So I just left, I just left New York and went to Taiwan, studied uh, Chinese and studied Kung Fu and then I went to Shaolin. And in Shaolin, I had to have my head shaved and live pretty much like a monk. Some of the videos that I did, like Martial Arts Odyssey up in Surin, where I'm with Tony Jaa's trainer, that like I'm living in a monastery actually at that time. I've lived in a temple twice, once in Shaolin and then later in Thailand with uh, Prak Uba, living a very Spartan existence, sleeping on the floor. Almost all these schools where I go, I wind up in the ring right away, I'm fighting, mixing it up, they're learning from me, I'm learning from them, and it's been a really good experience, but it's not easy. In Thailand, I met Prak Ruba. And Prak Ruba is this Muay Thai monk that rides horses and fights drug dealers on the Burma border. He's crazy, he could hit you so hard, but he was so kind, and he gave everything to help those kids that he took in. They were all orphans from the war in Burma. He, he was one of the best, one of the most special masters I had in Asia. And then from there I went to Cambodia. When I was in Cambodia, I was looking for Bokator, which is the Cambodian martial art that was wiped out during the, the Civil War, the genocide, during Pol Pot era. And I finally found Grandmaster San Kim Singh. And he was a guy who had gone as a refugee to the States. His whole family had been killed by the, by the Pol Pot regime. He had a huge impact on my life. And, I was the first foreigner ever to study it. I was the first foreigner ever to write about it. And then Derek Morris and I were the first foreigners that got promoted to Black Belt. My interest in Burma uh, came from the time when I was living with Crew Bob because all those boys that lived and trained with him and all the guys I was fighting with and training with, almost all of them were tribal kids whose parents had been killed. And among all those tribal people, the ones I really hit it off with a lot were the Shan. And so I always had this thing in the back of my mind that I wanted to go to Shan land and help. It was arranged, the army uh, guys met me, I can't go into the details, the army guys met me, they helped me get into, into Burma through the landmines, through the combat zone and onto the army base in Burma. And then I heard about this Lai Tai, which is Shan Kung Fu, and I met the, this kid in Gonwan, he's, he's about 20, 22 years old, he doesn't really know how old he is. So I went and filmed with, with Gonwan, and we've of course since become friends. Yes, we're very dangerous, we're in a war zone, but no matter how much danger I was facing, I knew I was going to leave. I knew that I could leave anytime I wanted, and it was over for me. Those guys had to live there forever. And when I was leaving, one of the colonel's aides said to me, make sure to get that video out, because if they overrun us, that's going to be the only record ever in the world that life had ever existed. So as far as I know, my story that was published in Kung Fu magazine was the first story ever written about Lai Tai outside of Burma and my film footage as far as I know is the first film footage that's ever been done on Lai Tai. Well, for almost eight years now I've been in Asia going from country to country studying language and studying martial arts and studying with a lot of teachers and I was writing for magazines so I was doing print stories on all these different martial arts and then about two years ago somebody gave me a video camera. So I went back and I've been filming with all these different masters and that's basically what martial arts odyssey is. I go, I'm training with a master, it's some interesting martial art or interesting place or interesting master and I'm filming it and then putting the videos up on YouTube so that people all over the world can enjoy it, can learn about those cultures, those martial arts and I really hope that people are learning about culture and again it's not a how-to thing. Some of the episodes they talk about how to throw an elbow, how to do something, but that's not what it's about. These aren't training videos. I would say that the bulk of the feedback has been good. The bulk of people seem to really understand what I'm doing. I, I like to think of it as martial arts anthropology. I hope that I've had a positive impact on a lot of my Asian friends, but the people that I hope I've taught a lot to is the people in the West, you know. Not everyone can quit their job tomorrow and run off to Asia and do stuff, you know. And so this is an opportunity for them to see something that they might otherwise not get to see and learn about these cultures like Cambodia, like Burma. I hope I've had a positive impact. 
and I've helped teach those people. As always, Martial Arts Odyssey, I'm Antonio Graceffo. Get in the gym, do your sets, do your reps, do your road work, but please say a prayer for the people of Sean State.